smile Beth and I think y'all miss me. <laughs> now I did have some streams and a video up this weekend but I have had so many people come to me and go when are you gonna do another cooking video? We miss hearing you talk while you're cooking and um, to be honest with everything that's gone on this summer Lord I'm out of breath. You think I've been running. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, with everything that's gone on this summer you know I talked about word salad. <laughs> I was afraid if I got on here and I started making a video and put it up, it wouldn't make any sense. That's a big fear when you're going through some things and you're sick. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to do this and do a good job. I'm going to try live streaming too while I cook. Um, I've always been kind of afraid to do that because I'm like, what if I scorch something? What if something goes wrong? But I have to say, um, I've been watching Rosie O'Kelly. Love her, love her. And she made the most beautiful pot pies and um, she did it all and you know even when things you know weren't working out right with the first dough you know she kept working with it and kept talking I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep up with the chat and cook but I'm gonna try and uh, you know she's made me feel brave and I just want to say too um, that pie looked absolutely fantastic and <laughs> my husband and I've been together almost 10 years and I love making uh you know chicken pot pies and you know i always make one and freeze one and every time i'd say why don't i make a chicken pot pie he'd say no i don't like them i don't like chicken pot pie i don't want to eat it and i'm like really have you had mine yet no but i still don't want it <laughs> just make something else that i really like and so i didn't fight the battle well he was in of course we were sitting together watching and we had rosie on the big screen and i said she's doing this like I do. She's that a little different. That's pretty much the same. And I was learning as I was going. I had power clips on the phone. My husband's sitting there. And you know, when it was over with, and Lord, it looked good. I said, see, hers is almost identical to what I do. And uh, he said, that looks good. I said, if I make one, will you eat it? And he said, if it looks like that and tastes like that, yeah. <laughs> so, Thank you, you've made my husband ready to try something new. And I uh, appreciate that. So I'll be, I'll be using that same recipe and seeing where it differs from mine and uh, try it out. So what I'm gonna do today, God, you think I hadn't made a video in years. I'm kind of a little nervous. Bear with me, please. Um, <laughs> as I start this video, we're gonna make cobbler. And if you've watched other people make cobbler, like I think it was one of the cooking shows, where that was the challenge to make a fruit cobbler. And I have to say, you know, I guess it's silly that little things upset me, but they didn't make cobbler right, none of them. <laughs> if you're from the South and you have homemade cobbler, it does not have like a thin pie crust or even, a, even like a puff pastry pie crust on top and then like a bunch of gelatinous gloop of berries and whatnot. In the middle and then nothing on the uh, or one of them had a crust i think on the bottom but just the bottom and then they were in like the little fluted like almost like a ramekin and i'm like that's so stupid that's not how you make it you know um cobblers are made in casserole dishes now i can't find my corningware much like my iron skillet that i bitch about all the time um i use my pyrex bowl and the reason i do this it's twofold. One, because I need some corningware. Uh, I'm gonna have to go buy some <laughs> and look some up. But also because this is see-through and it cooks well. Pyrex, you can cook it. Um, I can see that it's getting done completely through. Because as you watch me make this, you'll see that there's a batter and then you pour the fruit in on top and you cook it all together. Well, what you wanna make sure of is that it's cooked completely through. If you take a cobbler out of the oven too early, you can end up with, um, if it's not done well enough, it's not like a bread with fruit. And that's what you want. You want it like a real moist, moist bread, you know, with the fruit in it. It'll end up like, uh, almost like you put jello in it. It's not good. And you want the top to be a nice golden brown and, you know, all the way through. And then I serve it with vanilla ice cream. Okay. So, uh, and everybody always likes it. And I make it with a lot of different fruits, you know, different things, I'll, but I don't mix them. That's one of the things that I found that when, when I make cobbler, people would say make me this one or that one. 
But when I would make a mixed one, like mixed berries with, you know, say cherries and raspberries and maybe some peaches, or if I made an apple cobbler and I put cranberries in it, which go together. For the most part, people could be like, eh, it's all right. But when I make it with a single fruit, everybody goes crazy over it. So that's what I'm gonna to try to teach you today. Um, <laughs> I hope it goes well, I hope I don't screw it up. If it does, I guess I can reshoot it. I can just do it all over again, right? I'll just throw it out. Today, uh, y'all know I love my crazy t-shirts. Let me see if I can get this down here without screwing anything up. Laura, I'm probably gonna break my camera on this thing. Okay, as you see, y'all know I love Betty Davis. This is her from Now Voyager. And it's the famous quote, Oh, Jerry, let's not ask for the moon when we have the stars. So, <laughs> I found that, and my husband got it for me. Let's take a look. I gotta get this up a little bit higher. See, my camera angles are all off. I'm not used to it. And then, of course, I think I showed y'all this. I have an apron that was special ordered, printed, and it said, it says, only bitching is my in my kitchen is done by me. And then it says Mama Best World. <laughs> and it's silly in it. And I've got I've got all sorts of cute ones, and I've got some that are monogrammed, and I've got some that have sands on them, and some that are just pretty. And uh, people always say, what do you collect? Well, I collect cookie jars, but they're usually expensive. But if you want to make me happy, send me an apron or a silly t-shirt. Um, my brother gave me one I still wear. It says, there are no stupid questions. And on the back it says, just stupid people. <laughs> I have to be careful where I wear that one. I get in trouble. All right. I'm going to get all my fixings together. I've got them all here. And I'll show them to you one at a time. And show you how I layer it and put it in the bowl. And we're going to make some peach cobbler. Back in a second. Okay, y'all ready? First thing you want to do is you want to take your fruit. And you want to have it thickened up. You want you don't want a light syrup like usually comes with it. Like if you can peaches or if you buy peaches or whatever. You know, it's got a very light, because um, you don't want a whole lot of sugar with peaches. They're naturally sweet. So what I do, and no, I do not buy brand name canned peaches. I have never found a difference except for some are bigger than others. So this is Kroger brand, and it says sliced peaches. And my husband bought them in heavy syrup, which I told him not to. But I'm going to adjust for that by not putting quite as much sugar in as we cook them. Okay, so you want to take your pot. And I use stainless steel. See, I'm still struggling. I use my stainless steel. These are not cooked in aluminum. If you have aluminum pans, throw them out. Throw them out and don't ever use them again. Stay away from them. Get stainless steel or get your copper. But don't use aluminum. All right, we want to keep you from getting sick. All right, now in this, I'm gonna start heating that on low. I will be so happy when they install the new cook range that matches everything else. I've got all my new appliances in, just about. Okay, so I start with my peaches. I'm gonna warm them up. Then I'm gonna add a cup and a half of sugar normally. Well, I use Splenda a lot because I'm diabetic. And it helps with those calories. Even when you're eating a dessert, you know, it's like eating a Diet Coke with a, drinking a Diet Coke and eating a burger or a snicker bar. <laughs> Anyway, so instead of putting quite as much sugar in, which would normally be for this amount of peaches, which is 29 ounces, oh, 29 ounce can of peaches, I'm gonna put in just over a cup. Something like a rounded cup. See, it's got a little lump. It's all right. It'll be fine. That's all we're gonna put in there. Now, if you like things really sweet, if you want a really, really sweet cobbler, by all means, add it to it. Now for the thickening agent, I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna grab my flour. I can use self-rising flour, you can use plain flour. It doesn't really matter because you're cooking it. And uh, this, which is a very wet mixture, makes no difference. And you're only using, I usually about a fourth of a cup or about an eighth of a cup, half of this. gonna get that and if you want to get fancy you can put it through a sifter I have a sieve over there sometimes I want to get fancy I might do it but I'm just gonna sprinkle this and let that start to heat okay now there are some things that I've done ahead of time to help me out Get this out of the way you're gonna put butter Woo! there went something flying there's a ghost in the room 
<laughs> it's almost Halloween. I can tell that I've been sick because I'm looking around and I'm seeing all of my Christmas cookie jars still. I'm like, oh my Lord, I never even switched them around. So now i got to pull out all the spooky Halloween stuff. <laughs> all right, in your Pyrex bowl, while this is starting to warm up, and I've got it on like between low and one, you want to melt your one stick of butter, half a cup of butter. Do not use margarine. Cats won't eat margarine. Dogs won't eat margarine. Set margarine outside, you can't get nothing to eat it. That tells me you shouldn't eat <laughs> okay? Get you butter, everything in the neighborhood will be in that bowl. So, I recommend that. Now you put it in the bottom, and the reason is, as you add things to this, it's still gonna keep that surface coated. And it's just, just a nice light coat of butter. And if you say, well, I don't wanna eat a lot of fats, Butter's one of the fats that you actually should eat. You cannot process vitamin D, niacin, you know, all the fat soluble vitamins and nutrients from your food if you don't have some fat in there. If you don't need a little fat in your diet, a healthy fat, a healthy natural fat, your olive oils, you know, your omega-3s, fish oil, real fish oil, don't go getting it from someplace cheap because it's never the right stuff, but and butter. And if you're vegan, you know, by all means go for the olive oil and uh, avocado oil. You know, there's lots of different, or almond oil. But uh, make sure that you have the fats that you need. So you put that in there. Now I'm gonna let this cook. And what I wanna do, y'all know I'm um, wooden spoon. A wooden spoon does not change the flavor of anything. When, uh, when you go home to cook, if you've ever cooked with utensils that have like you know, like a plastic coating on them. My thing's going wonky. Sorry about that. Hmm. Wonder why. I've probably done something to it. Um, sometimes it can change the flavor as the as the spoon heats up or the spatula heats up. Like I don't like those plastic covered spatulas. Somebody gave me a bunch of those for a wedding gift one time. I threw them all away. But and I wasn't ungrateful. I just said I want to use them. Okay. Now this is starting to warm up. I'm going to heat it a little bit more. I'm going to go up to about two and a half. And I'm just going to keep stirring. And as you see, you get it to where you can see it. See this? One good thing is you can do these. You can touch them. <laughs> can't show you yet. Um, it's starting to thicken up. But you can touch a stainless steel pot near the top. And it's not going to burn you. It's great. Um, and that's because this has, I think, these are Cuisinart. And I can't remember whether it was 12 beaten layers of stainless steel on the bottom. But the thicker the bottom is with the steel, it's the slower and even. It makes it slower and even when it heats. And uh, it doesn't get quite so much heat going up the side. So you have less a chance of scorching things. Unless you're silly. I mean, my pans have been scorched. Uh, my husband has forgotten to, you know, start to reheat things slowly and he'll just kick it on up the high and think nothing of it and then I'm like what are you doing he said oh I'm heating up such and such I say well you've ruined it I have to make a new batch he's done that with soup I don't know how you scorch soup but he manages to do it okay so I'm just cooking this and it's coming out real nice you can see well no you can't let's slide around a little bit Lord I am not a good camera person all right, I'm going to lift this up. Do you see how it's starting to thicken up? It's not quite like water. It's almost like a nice syrup. What we want is that to be nice and thick. Um, you don't want to cook it down dry. You don't want it too, you don't want it too wet. Um, you have to kind of feel for it. But I usually cook this not quite to a boil. And we're going to let that simmer for a little bit, and I'll show you when it's done. And then we'll start the second part. Okay, this should be a little easier to see. I backed the camera up. <laughs> the first thing you want to do is get you an egg. Now, I always recommend cooking eggs from room temperature. So, of course, we always keep our eggs in the refrigerator. Unless you have natural eggs and they still have the bloom on them. Which is a whole other subject we can discuss. But, take it out of the refrigerator usually an hour and a half, two hours beforehand. Let it sit there and let it warm to room temperature. So, I've got my egg. Always crack an egg in a bowl. You can ruin more stuff by not taking this step. If your egg turns out to, you know, shatter on you and you got, you know, little bits of shell all over the place, you've ruined your batter or whatever you're cooking. If uh, by some chance the egg is cracked and it's bad, 
Well, if you crack it into the bowl, you screw it up again. So don't do that. Take the extra step. Just take a little bowl. And this is my little whisk. And there's a story with this. I think there's a story with everything in my kitchen. When my daughter was little, she was just like me. She was playing the kitchen while I was making dinner. And I always cooked dinner, of course. You know, I, we didn't eat out and stuff like that. But she liked to help. And she said, I want to do something. Let me help. And she would make the biscuits. I would be making biscuits and I'd give her dough or something like that. But she loved to mix stuff. And you know how kids like to play in pots and pans. And I'd give her a bowl. And uh, I'd put whatever in it. Sometimes it was flour and water, which got everywhere. And I didn't care a bit. <laughs> it's worth it to see her having fun to, for me. And I'd just clean it up. You know, it was fun. But she wanted a whisk. You know, she'd see mommy using the big whisk. So I had an old mixer that died on me. And it had this on it. And I thought, hmm, that'd be very perfect for her. And I had kept it. And along with keeping this, I've kept the memory alive. Every time I use it. And I usually use it for my little eggs. So we're going to whip it. Whip it good. Da -da 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 -da. I know I was talking about Rosie's uh, chicken pot pie. That turned out so good. And she had the prettiest egg wash on top. You know, and it also reminded me that I can't find my brush, my basting brush. I told my husband, I said, you're going to have to go to the paint store. Because I'm not buying one from you know, the grocery store, it cost me three times as much. And you just need a long handled paintbrush. I usually get one about an inch wide. I've had them two inches wide, it doesn't matter. But yeah, that reminded me that I needed to get another one. You know, when we moved into this house, things disappeared. There were things, I think, in boxes that just somehow magically disappeared between point A and B. And I've never seen some of my things since. And I keep going, I gotta buy this, I gotta buy that. Still. After over six years, be almost it's almost seven years. So, okay, so you want to whip that little egg up, have it sitting here on the side. Now, my peaches here are almost ready to boil. I'm gonna let them cook just a little bit. And if you can see, well, if I turn my spoon around, right, you see it's getting nice and thick. We got a good syrup going here. You'll start to see little bubbles that'll look white at the top, little bubbles before it boils. That's what you want to do. Now, the best part about making a cobbler is you just put all the crap in the bowl. You know, you put them in an order, but you put it in there and you mix it up. And it makes it a lot easier. And if you remember, half a cup, cup, cup. And let me make sure, let me read off of the, off of the ingredients because I forgot to do that. Okay, in here we have a 29 ounce can of peaches. If you, if you use your own quart jars. It's not quite, it's about three quarters of a quart if you're pulling out a can, your own canning. I used two tablespoons of flour and then I used uh, one cup of sugar because it's already in a heavy syrup. If it's in light syrup, use a cup and a half, okay? That's for your fruit. Oh, that's looking good. All right, for the rest of it, this is so easy, half a cup of butter, which is already in here and you wanna make sure it's melted in the bottom. You can't mix it in the dough. Mm -mm, that's a big no-no. You want a cup of self-rising flour. Make sure it's self-rising. And then you want a cup of sugar and a cup of milk. One egg, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and half a teaspoon of vanilla. Now, how simple is that? It would be really hard to screw that up. I might, but <laughs> we'll still eat it anyway because with those ingredients, how can you go wrong? So, all righty. We're going to start out first. Ugh. I am weak as water, y'all. I have not done anything physical in so long. I need to start working out. Of course, we have treadmill. I can't use that because my knees are screwed up. But we do have a bow flex that I can work out on. Okay. Here we go. Nice cup. Nice even cup. And I'm just going to sprinkle it in there as best as possible. Okay. You can't really see the bowl because I've got this presenting. But you know what? I'm going to take this off the heat right now. I'm going to put this in the middle. It should be fine. I've turned it off. Okay, so we've got a cup of flour in there. And now we're going to get some sugar. Ugh. Yeah, I'm going to have to get on that Bowflex. Or I'm not going to be able to lift anything. You know, I'm getting to the age now where I have to think about exercise. <laughs> My daily activities don't include things that really work me out. 
So there we go, cup of sugar. And like I say, it's easy. Just pour that in there. Now, some people say, why am I not mad? Well, it goes well with peaches. You'd be surprised. Now we'll get a cup of milk. Once again, if you are not lactose intolerant, and if you are, God bless you. My dad is, and he had an awful time. My brother is too. But I'm not. Whole milk, you need natural fats. Whole milk has the same fats as butter. Drink a glass of milk every day. You'll lose weight. Really, you will. All those slim fast milk. Okay, so we're going to put a nice cup of whole milk. I have seen some people cut it half with buttermilk and half with whole milk. I don't care for the flavor, I'll be honest. There you go. That was easy. So we'll put that in there, and I'm throwing stuff. Now we're going to put a half teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla. Now you see how I'm just letting that sit there? I'm not mixing it yet. Do not put this in a mixer. Do it like, do it like I'm showing you. Makes it so much easier. Who do I have to have spoon? You know what? I, if I have my contacts on, I need my reading glasses. If I have my regular glasses on, I have to take them off to be able to see. How crazy is that? God wants me in glasses. Um, <laughs> okay, get your vanilla extract. Do not get artificial vanilla extract. It's not that much difference to put the real thing. And you just put that right in there. Now these are my DDs. You know, on my maternal side, my grandmother is my DD. I took care of her by myself for four years. She had Alzheimer's and she was bedridden. And I gave up everything. Sold everything that I could and stored the rest. And y'all heard me tell the story about it. And I went to take care of my DD. I went, she wasn't going to nursing home. No, she wanted to stay at home. Alzheimer's patients are rough. <laughs> you know, God bless anyone who's going through you know, taking care of someone, whether they have Alzheimer's or, you know, whatever. When you take care of your relatives, I always feel like, I felt with her like I was giving back because she was so good to me. She, I mean, she would say, you're our only granddaughter. You're our Bethy. And, you know, I still hear that sometimes. And when I use her tools in the kitchen, I never do it without thinking about her. And it's just a beautiful thing. She was a wonderful woman. Okay. Enough, enough of reminiscing, I don't need to get all teary eyed. Half a teaspoon. Now, some people like a little more, some people may not want the nutmeg, but I think it just brings out that flavor of those peaches so fully. You know, nutmeg, especially if I'm making in the fall. Now, sometimes if I'm doing apple, I'll do nutmeg and cinnamon. Okay, if I'm doing cherry, you know, I've used orange extract. And it actually brings the cherry flavor out a little bit. You know, test test the different extracts and see what you like. It's your cobbler. You gotta eat it. Might as well make it the way you want, right? Okay. So we've got all that in there. And I did forget to mention one thing. Oh, a little dash of salt. I do not buy brand name salt either. I think that's stupid. Okay? Salt to salt to salt. I do not use a measuring cup either. My hands are clean. I've got a sink full of bleach water. <laughs> bleach and soapy water over there as always. Y'all know I have a thing for bleach. I put enough in my hand to where it's not quite half a teaspoon. And you know if you've been cooking, you know how much it is. And I just sprinkle that in there. You gotta have a little salt to go against the sugar. But, um, and if you want to use Splenda, now I didn't put Splenda in this thought about it, but I thought now I'm going to make it straight. If you want to use Splenda, Splenda says it's supposed to be the same as sugar, like you measure a cup to a cup. For me, the taste is not the same. Sugar tastes better, of course, but it takes a little bit extra. Splenda, usually like for every cup that you're supposed to use, I add about a fourth to maybe a third at the most more. So if you need two cups of sugar and you want to use Splenda instead, I would use uh, two and two thirds cups. You know, and then it, and it also doesn't thicken. So if you're wanting to use it like with the peaches, don't. I'll tell you right now, don't work, try it. Uh, <laughs> save yourself some trouble. But anyway, that's how that goes. Oh, I got, I got two things of it, I'll extract out. Okay, now I think we've got everything measured. We've had our butter sitting in the bottom. Ooh, that's gonna be good. Now what I want you to do, 
take this whisk out. Get your whisk. What am I little? I ain't using little. Okay, it's gonna look like this. Look how pretty that is. Ooh, and it smells so good. You can smell cobbler coming, I swear. Um, and I just real gently, you can see, just very gently, just bring that in together. It's okay if you leave some lumps. You do not want to over mix this batter. You want to work that sugar into the milk and the flour. You want to just see how I'm just like, just loving on it. Just love on it. And get that all in there. And you'll, you'll have lumps coming in the bottom because remember your, your butter was down there when you put the sugar to flour and it soaked it up first. So that's what you want to do. Just run that along the bottom and just say, I'm cooking with love. This is going to be delicious. <laughs> and it'll rise up and it'll be so pretty. But, and I try to keep the batter from going too far up the sides. Um, and it's purely aesthetic. I mean, it's just a look at that way. Anywho. Okay. Now, I'm going to set that over there. I want you to look at my batter. It's got lumps in it. They're about, the biggest one's probably the size of a very small pea, and the rest are smaller. <laughs> They're very tiny, but you want it like that, and you're going to see that it just sits there, and it looks very pretty, all right? Now, you got to heat the oven up. Some people like to, well, I need to cancel that. Some people like to cook. It's slower. That's fine if you want to do that. Um... I've tried cooking it faster, it just burns the top, and then the bottom doesn't get done. I've tried cooking it at lower temperatures, it gets very dry. I don't like it real dry, don't want it real wet either, because I'm putting ice cream on it. Okay, uh, well, I want to make sure I tell you the right, it's, I bake this at between 425 and 450, depends on your oven and your altitude, but, you know, I'm going to do, this is a new oven. I'm so proud of it. It's the regular oven that I'm going to be using, not the confection one. Okay, the confection's at the top. I'm going to put it in at the bottom. I'm going to do it at 425. And the reason is, it's a new oven. <laughs> and I'm sure it cooks a lot better than my old one. Uh, from what I've seen, it cooks much even, much more even. And uh, I don't have to worry about, you know, it, it like my cakes, you know, when I was doing a layer cake. I swear it would be like that and I'd be like there's nothing worse when you're making a, a three layer cake and you go and it's just even when you cut the top off it's because you know you always take your uh, I usually use like a bread knife after it's cool and you're slicing across and one side is thin and then you try to patch it of course you can do a lot of stuff with cake you can play with cake but I get so aggravated because I was making a real huge cake one time uh, it was not this past year, but the year before. Yeah. I made my daughter a labyrinth. If you know the movie Labyrinth. I made her a labyrinth birthday cake. Well, it was big. It was huge. But uh, her boyfriend at the time was a big eater. And she had uh, two roommates. Then, uh, you know, she's out on her own. Being, maybe it was, was it, yeah, was it two years ago? Two and a half. Two and a half. Anyway, um, so I made this big cake. But I was ready to cry. By the time I got it done, it took me baking the layers because the thing was huge. I mean, it was like a full sheet cake. Like if you buy cakes from Walmart or the bakery, you know, you get like a half sheet cake and that's the normal size we get for a family. Double that, and that's how big it was because it had the labyrinth maze on top. And then I made the characters and I have the helping hands. It was so cute. I wish I could show you pictures of it. I don't know where I put them. Um, the helping hands, I had green fondant hands that I made and they held up, I ordered a little crystal ball, you know, like he did this back and forth with the ball. So I had that at the head of it and then I, <laughs> but Lord God, if I had to make that cake again, I'd just say, forget it. <laughs> so you could not pay me enough money to do that again. I'll make other cakes, but I am never making another maze again. That was ridiculous, but it was pretty. <laughs> so, I'm going to put this in at 425, and uh, it'll be 35 to 40 minutes, and I'll take it out, and we'll look at it and see how pretty it is, okay? So, before we, of course, before we put it in there, you're probably saying, well, 
Did you forget about your fruit? Well, no, of course not. Here you go. Look how pretty. Look at that. Nice. See, just dripping good syrup. Okay. Now, let me find a place to set this down. I'm running out of room. You just take that hot and you just pour that right into that batter. And I try to pour it in the center. And the reason I do that is because you want to have your fruit sitting at the top, some of it. It's going to sink to the bottom, but I pile it in the top because that does that we made the batter is going to go through it and over it. But you want your fruits in every serving, okay? If you try to dot and do all that stuff, you're wasting your time. Put it in the middle because you're going to cut from the middle out. Whether you're using a casserole dish, I have made them in bread tins. I have made these in about everything. I like this Pyrex bowl. Now see, look, look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? And you're gonna see what happens. Oh, I'm weak. What happens after we put it in the oven and we give it some time and some love and cook on it. And I'll talk to you in a minute. I got a little story to tell. Be right back. Well, I know I'd forget something. I forgot all about the egg. <laughs> Usually I mix it in with the batter. What we're gonna do is I have poured the egg around the sides, because remember the fruit's in the middle. And I'm just gonna mix that with the whisk very gently, because that egg helps it rise. So you can't do it without it. We're gonna do that. And it'll turn out fine, I've done this before. Thank goodness, because I was getting ready to panic. I thought of all the things to do. I said I was gonna end up screwing this up, and by golly, I have. All right, so that's in there. Time to put this little baby in the oven. Okay, cobbler's in the oven. It's looking good. Um, dishes are in the sink. And I always try to put a message in the middle of any of my videos. You all know that. And I want to talk about something that keeps getting brought up all the time. And not just for me or, you know, my friends. It's, I'm seeing this across the board. And I want to talk about subs and views and attention. We as humans all want attention. <laughs> we want attention from those we love. We want attention from friends. And unless there's something really wrong, we want positive attention, right? We want people to approve of us. We want to do things that make people like us or bring us some kind of gratification, some kind of a reward, whether, whether it's money, whether it's reputation, whatever it is. And you know what? When people seek attention and they get negative attention, and a lot of people are coming after them or whatever. Some people like that, I don't. <laughs> and I've had way too much of it, I'll be honest with you. Somebody said, you just want attention, you know, a comment, I said, if I want attention, I'll go to my own channel and do something. Right, doesn't that make more sense? I don't want negative attention. And I've had too much, and then I've seen other people, and they're getting negative attention all the time, and it's outweighing the good, and it's not healthy. That's not a healthy way to be. Now, we also hear all they care about is views and subs. The only reason they say this, or the only reason they do that, or the only reason they're nice, they want views or subs, or the only way they stir the pot. <laughs> we hear that all the time. You're a shit stirrer. You know, uh, that the only reason that somebody does anything is for subs and views. Now, my channel's grown really well. <laughs> I've been doing this, let's see, it's almost a year. And I'm real happy where my channel is, you know, my amount of views and the people that are subscribed and now the Bitchin' in the Kitchen channel is doing pretty well. It, that's more of my vent channel when, cause I don't put drama on this channel. I put it all over there. If I've got something that I'm upset about or something, that's where it goes. And you know, it keeps it separate. I want this to always be a positive channel and I want people to get, you know, help understanding, support, whatever you need, you know, I want you to find it. I want you to have it. And I say all the time, if somebody wants attention, give it to them, okay? Um, if they're crying out for help, there was a lady who was crying out for help in a chat. And honestly, um, there were people who were like, oh, she just wants attention. Well, give it to her, you know? If someone is saying that they're having a hard time and they're down, help them. You know, you don't have to be mean. 
to give someone attention. Even if you think maybe they're not pure, having the purest of emotions or purest of, what's the word? See, I, the purest of intentions and motives with what they're doing. If they want attention, if they're calling out for it, give it to them. But it doesn't have to be, you don't have to give them negative attention. Now, the person that I saw, I saw she had made a video saying that she's, you know, having a hard time, but she's going to be okay, and she hasn't hurt herself or anything. Thank God. I've, prayer works. Because I think all of us were praying. Everybody I knew was. Um, but somebody said also that the reason that was not stopped, I guess the reason they didn't go private real fast or whatever on the stream. I don't think they noticed, to be honest, until it was getting pretty intense. Um, somebody said, oh, it's for subs and views. We all want people to see us doing what we do or hear us. You know, if I make a stream and I'm cooking, I want you to enjoy watching me cook, maybe learn. If, you know, <laughs> If something's happened and I want to discuss it and say my side of it, I want people to hear me and understand me. And, um, you know, that's what we all want. The views, we just don't want people just to come, just to come. We want, we want people to get something out of it. And we do it because we enjoy it. Okay, because there's no money in YouTube. I mean, seriously. Let me check this. This is smelling awful good. Woo! Oh, baby. <laughs> but, um... When everything someone does or says is followed by a bunch of people going, ah, oh, they just want subs and views, they just want subs and views, they start this and that and the other for subs and views. You know what, there may be some people who do that and you may feel uncomfortable with it. That's fine. We, but just don't watch them. But don't tell someone that everything they do is with bad motive. Because sometimes you're very, very wrong. You know, sometimes you may be right. There are people who do things to, you know, just for subs and views, like clickbait. You know, that's for subs and views. You know, I'm giving away, I saw what, I'm giving away two iPhone X's. You know, we're sick, we're dying, whatever. We're, but we're giving away two iPhone X's if you like, sub, and uh, hit the bell. And, uh, you know, that's clickbait. Now, that's for subs and views. But if someone's pouring their heart out or they're talking about things, that's not subs and views. That's not what that's for. That's for people to listen, maybe understand, um, maybe make you think a little bit, you know. And I'm not talking about just myself, but other people too. You know, even rants. There are people who really have good response just with a rant, a good old rant. Well, sometimes that's the best way to get it out without hurting themselves or anyone else putting their fist through the wall or banging their head on the countertop. You know, sometimes they just need to get it all out and then it's over with. And if you can do that and manage, you know, there are, there are some people who do it and, and do it so well, like Pirate. Y'all know she's one of my dear friends. Love her to death. She can vent and then it's done and by, you know, she'll start out venting and then by, you know, halfway through the stream, we're laughing, carrying on. And, you know, and it's not meant to hurt anybody. It's just she's getting her emotions out. She's had a stressful day. Things bother her. She gets it out, but then it's done. It's over with, you know. And then it's like going through a thunderstorm, and then you get to the sunshine. And if you're ranting or you're watching people rant, and they do that, okay, that's great. If it bothers you or triggers you, don't watch it. Okay? Fast forward till they get to the good part where everybody's carrying on and laughing and having a good time. That makes sense, doesn't it? But what I'm saying is, we all want understanding. You know, yeah, there are people who use clickbait to get subs and views, but most of us just want to be hurt. And as for attention seeking, we all do, even from birth. Babies cry to get attention. Adults cry out in pain. We cry, we yell, we scream, we laugh. We want attention from each other. So don't act like that's such a bad thing. We're all like that. Even if you make a mean comment, you're wanting attention, right? If you make a good comment, you want attention. Make more good than bad. That's all I'm saying. I'm gonna try to do this, you know, more myself. I need to. Uh, I recognize that there are things I need to change. I'm not perfect, you know, God knows. 
and nobody else either is either so we don't need to hold people up on pedestals and say how dare you do that <laughs> you know you're a horrible person because you said something no 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 that needs to stop okay and you know spread a little more love around and good attention and uh just treat each other a little better i'm gonna try to and hopefully we can make some changes and make it not so toxic in the community spread a little love <laughs> all right i'm going to check the cobbler blah and see how it's doing and i'll be back with the finished bye Look at this. Now, Lord, I can't move. When you're opening this, look at that. Oh my Lord, is that pretty? Don't open the oven for too long, but that's browning up top and I'm shaking. <laughs> Hang on. Hey, you want peek? Hold on just a second. Y'all forgive my shaky hand here. But we're gonna look at this. Ooh, look at that. Look at that, baby. Oh my God, my whole house smells like peach cobbler. Be ready soon. Okay, y'all. It's time for the big reveal. My whole house smells like peach cobbler. It absolutely smells delicious in here. Okay, I got. I left it in for 40 minutes. I've got a beautiful deep brown, and you want to make sure you have a deep brown top. Let me pull this out and show you. Now, here's the secret before I do this. When you look in and you see the tops the color you want, turn that heat off. Leave your oven just open just a little bit and let it cool as it's in the oven, okay? Because it's still cooking. Most people forget that, <laughs> but it's got internal heat now, so it's gonna cook. Let's bring this baby out. Oh, oh that's pretty. Got a little dark on one side, that's all right. Well, I can tell before I show it to you, my husband's gonna be very happy. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Now my camera works not great. I'm a little shaky on things, y'all know that. But here we go. Take a look at that baby. Oh my Lord. Let's see if I can flip this around, see if I can do this right. That's what you want it to look like. A Deep, beautiful crust. Now I got a little dark right over here on this side. You can see that, but the rest of it, see how it's broken? Just perfectly, you want it exactly like that. And then look, see if this will adjust with the light. It's gonna be golden brown. And if you peek, when you look, you see the peaches? I told you they'd separate out. It's perfect, absolutely beautiful. And what I want it to do is good, get good and cooled down. Cobbler is not something you want to serve right out of the oven. Okay, you want to make sure that it's got a nice cool, it, you can have it a little warm. You want it warm enough to work. It might melt your ice cream when you put it on top, just a little bit. But that's how we're going to serve this. I'm going to have vanilla ice cream with it. And you're going to see how good it is. And my husband never gets on camera, y'all know that. But uh, you'll hear him. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I definitely hope you try this recipe. If you have any problems with it, you know how to get in touch with me. And this is my best. Me and my cobbler, we're out. Bye.